What is going on guys? We are back with another video today and we are doing another experiment on Mata 22 and today we're going to be taking that updated roster that we've been tweaking here and there and we're going to see what EA thinks will happen for the quote unquote 2022 season. Obviously it's not going to be perfect. The schedules aren't going to be the same at all. Some of the players are going to be missing from like the sixth to seventh round, which you never know. There could be like some great player that comes in due to injury and becomes one of the best players at that position for that team. And, you know, the huge contributor, you don't know. Uh, but the reason why I'm doing this compared to just like, oh, well, just watch the rebuilds. Well, it's a bit different because in the rebuilds, I kind of just let it happen because it just takes so much prep, you know, each time to to release players, you know, go to the team, release players, change the depth charts, do all that stuff, change the devs and all that. Whereas here, I added, you know, a lot of the devs that I think are going to happen in the game, you know, like uh, also we have Ritter playing here, whereas Mariota probably plays the first season. Uh, you know, we have all the guys playing properly. Some of the guys normally wouldn't start because of overall. Uh, and obviously, we have them starting here. Uh, you know, a left tackle. We got uh, Aquanu, who has... Uh, I can't remember if I gave him star or superstar, but normally, he wouldn't have that. He would just have normal. So, we wouldn't know. I gave him star, which is debatable. You could definitely give him superstar. I just don't know how EA is going to do it. It's just, you know, they're pretty stingy on those offensive linemen, superstar devs. So... It's kind of tough on where they're going to go with that. But, yeah, we have all the players set. We're going to see what EA thinks for the actual awards, the stats, and, of course, obviously, who's going to win the Super Bowl. We'll also likely do this when Madden 23 actually drops. So then we have the ratings that they give and the devs they give and the schedule will be correct and hopefully the depth charts will be pretty accurate and we'll have a better depiction of you know, who may be starting in real life. So it'll probably be a little bit better, but this should be a little bit of a fun video. Get us hyped for next year, and uh, we'll see how far off EA is if we were to, you know, come back to this. I just wonder how the Eagles are going to do, because they're probably the team that improved the most, right? Getting Dream Team vibes, Namdi Asamoah, I think it was it Colin Jenkins. I think it was Colin Jenkins and a bunch of other dudes. Uh, but, I mean, yeah, obviously a little bit more sound, a little bit more future-proof with those guys that they grabbed. And, yeah, I wonder what is going to happen with this. Obviously, we've been seeing some kind of crazy sims with the Falcons just dominating. This time it's Ritter, though. And, yeah, I don't think I gave any. I think I might have given Pickett star to have none of the other quarterbacks anything better than normal, though. As you can see, the division, they have the Vikings in the NFC North as the worst team below the Bears and Lions. Now, I will say the Lions... Trended in the right direction. They're probably one of the toughest teams uh, effort-wise last year. The Bears, I think, might even be dead last in the division. I'm not even joking. I, I just don't know if that offensive line is going to hold up enough for Justin Fields. You, know, you compare the rosters. You know, There's a lot of talks about, oh, the Packers roster uh, wide receivers are so bad. They're even worse than the Bears. It's like, yeah, but the Packers have a much better offensive line. They have a much better running back room. They have a much better quarterback, obviously, even though I think Justin Fields is a good quarterback. I think he has a lot of potential. It's just, there's not really much you can do behind a bad line. It's just simply put. And their defense is just in shambles comparatively to what it used to be in years. And obviously Green Bay is trending towards that top five defense with the names they have individually, at least. I suppose we'll take a look at the stats and awards first, uh, just because then we'll be able to get kind of a, actually, now we're going to go with standings. Wow, Rogers had a pretty good year, but we're going to go with standings first because obviously the standings will be spoiled in the award. So let's see who's the best team in the league. Apparently Green Bay tied with the Niners and Cowboys. So the NFC got a couple of front runners here. A lot of the Sims I've been seeing is more realistic where the AFC is better. But once again, this is the, the Sim that I've done where I actually have most of the starters that are supposed to be starters, you know, rookies starting where they're going to start, uh, you know, Stingley at number two, whereas he would normally be number three in Sim because of Desmond King, where I imagine he's not going to be a boundary corner. But then again, you don't know what Stingley's, uh, you know, pro progress is going to look like before the season starts. Uh, but yeah, as far as the AFC goes, 11 and six to the Broncos, which I mean, seems like it would be a good haul, you know, a good decision with Russell Wilson. You have the Bengals who. I mean, you'd probably expect them to do a little bit better because, once again, they're a team that, you know, after going to the Super Bowl, improved quite a bit as well, especially on the offensive line. The Chargers, they seem to keep on getting better. The Bills, 10-7. and 7. Okay, okay, the Steelers at 10-7. That would be a pretty big win for them to make it to the Super Bowl. Titans at 10-7. and 7. 
the Browns are an interesting team because we don't know what happens. You know, it's going to happen with Deshaun Watson. There's talks about him getting suspended and missing some games. You know, there was talks about him missing the whole season, a couple of games. It's, I mean, realistically, I'm sorry to say it, but I mean, I, I don't know why I'm sorry to say it. It's actual facts, but money always beats everything. I mean, the, these these rap sheets, whether it's true or not, I mean, I'm not here to speculate that aspect of it, but whether, you know, there's, we've seen so many criminal cases, so many criminal charges just disappear. A lot of them, you know, just settled out of court for money. And, you know, we've, we've seen just in general, the NFL doesn't seem to care. Even if the player is convicted, if they come out of the jail, they're like, Hey, come on in, you know, but obviously Calvin Ridley can't bet on games, which once again, that's that's an aspect of yes, Calvin Ridley can bring in some money because he's a you know electrifying player, but the risk of you know the public backlash or the the way the team you know the way the league looks oh the players are betting this league is rigged you know that is way outweighing I mean even if it was one of the top tier quarterbacks if it was Brady they would suspend him I would say just because at the end of the day the brand is more important than ever. Uh, but when it comes to the, you know, like assault cases or something like that, those can kind of get swept under. Uh, but as far as Chiefs go, nine and eight missing the playoffs. The Dolphins at eight and nine, uh, they are an improved squad. But once again, it all comes down to Tua. I could see it happening. The Ravens at seven and ten, with the injuries they had last year, the adversities that they faced to do as well as they did, I just can't imagine. Assuming they're healthy, that they would go seven and ten. The Jets at seven and ten makes sense. The Texans, that's I mean, that's a huge win for them. The Colts, obviously, there'd be a huge loss with Matt Ryan. You, know, you bring him in thinking he's going to at least coast you into the Super Bowl or the Super Bowl, the playoffs, especially in that division, quote unquote, because you still have the Titans. But uh, the Jaguars expected, even with the new regime, the Patriots that would be a huge L, and then the Raiders. Once again, because of how competitive that division is and just in general the conference, you could see them miss the playoffs, but 6-11 and 11 would be very harsh. Of course, on the other end, we talked about the top three here. I don't have any problems with this. I think the Niners are a very underrated squad that are just coached so well. The Packers obviously have a great roster on paper. How will the wide receivers turn out? Cowboys have been getting, you know, they've got a couple of holes, but their defense has been getting better every year, it seems. The Panthers, I just think that quarterback situation is just too much of a question mark. The Saints, they've got a great all-around roster, but how will the quarterback position look? The Cardinals, I feel like they're under, they're not the greatest roster in the world. They just overplay based on some of their superstars, but Kyler Murray, I don't know, there's just such a rift there. The Seahawks, no chance, I'm sorry. Even if they have a chance, they shouldn't want it because they're just, too far away at this roster or at this point uh speaking of roster i you know like i said i mentioned it you know once russell wilson's gone i think it's easily a bottom three bottom five roster like i said and i was debating you know with him there you can almost make that argument and once again there's some seattle fans that are mad but it's just simply true i mean like no one could be perfect forever right we talk about you know the the seahawks teams of recent maybe being the best ever specifically on defense you can't just you can't take that compliment and then when your team actually sucks you get mad right like come on you got to take the good and the bad of course Washington quarterback situation is questionable the Rams I will say I feel like they're being overhyped like I, I will say last year's playoffs there was a lot of luck involved on both sides and once again sorry Bengals fans but I feel like the Bengals had the most of the luck I will say maybe not in the Super Bowl per se I, I mean I don't want to go into that aspect but leading up it just seems like the Rams or the Bengals could have easily gotten knocked out at any possible time. I mean, the Rams almost choked a massive lead to the Buccaneers, fumbling four times. So, I mean, I could see them going 8-9. I wouldn't expect it, but it's possible. Giants at 7-10, and 10, meh. You know, the Bears expected the Falcons finally sucking in Sim. 6-11 and 11 Lions. If Brady gets hurt, maybe, but if not, no chance. Eagles, once again, Jalen Hurts and... You have a lot of new names coming in, so they could suck, but I highly doubt a 5-12. and 12. And then the Vikings, how will the defense look? They've got a really good-looking edge, but cornerback still a huge issue. Wide receivers are great. Dalvin Cook is great. Kirk is okay. Could be, I mean, one or two injuries like last year where they got a lot of injuries away from being a 4-13 and 13 team, but I imagine they're one of those seven-team, you know, that seven-win minimum teams, and seven is kind of on the low end. So a lot of these I like. A lot of them I don't like, but yeah, I mean, let's go into these stats uh, real quick. Take a look at each position and uh, head to the awards. And yeah, right on to who wins the Super Bowl. So Justin Herbert 
in my opinion, looking like the MVP. Of course, this isn't normally what would happen in Sim. Trey Lance wouldn't get the start. It would be Jimmy Garoppolo for a year or two. Uh, but MVP probably goes to Herbert because they love that touch on a pick ratio. Uh, Rodgers is okay. Well, I mean, you know, comparing them to the rest, right? Like, this is an okay season in Madden, but in real life, it's not so. You know, 17 interceptions doesn't even probably put you in barely top 10, even with the touchdowns and yards. And I'd imagine the, the picks are just going to drop them down a ton. Uh, but Herbert, 43 to 8, he probably wins it. Also, a ton of yards. Uh, Mahomes, pretty good. Brady, really down year for him. Uh, Dak, you know, it's okay. Winston, pretty good considering you know, his talent level. Uh, Justin Fields, really good considering the surrounding talent. Josh Allen, it's a hugely down year. Really? Again? Now I can see why Seattle made it. Because the game, EA's, uh, you know, the NFL's got some rights to do. And they're like, hey, we'll put him in the game and make him a god every time he plays. I'm surprised it's not like 60 touchdowns, zero picks. Like, see? See, look, we like him. Promise. Cam Newton started. Oh, I forgot about all that crap. It doesn't matter because Cam Newton probably is like similar level to what the Falcons are starting anyways. But yeah, the Seahawks stole a spot of a, a you know, playoff team spot that they probably shouldn't have had, if we're going to be honest. But Zach Wilson, that would be a good year for the Jets, even though the yards are down. Pickett, kind of expect some growing pains. That's not terrible. That would be disappointing for the Broncos. Whether they made the playoffs or not at 11-6, it's a pretty bad season for a guy that's supposed to be the Lord and Savior there. Joe Burrow, really bad season considering, you know, what he's capable of. Jerry Goff, that's okay. Tua, probably looking to move on. Matt Corral got the start. Not terrible for his first year. Davis Mills, the yards are great. Touchdown a pick is decent. Not a whole lot of surrounding talent. Carson Wentz took care of the football. Daniel Jones, same thing. Uh, Murray and Lamar, pretty bad. Watson, decent, but, you know, you know that sample size is a little low. Trevor Lawrence, who I did drop to star in this one because I think he's probably going to be star next Madden. Uh, you know, he's, eh. Jalen Hurts, pretty bad. Tannehill, not great, but the touchdown to pick ratio, that's exactly what you expect from him. Derek Carr, that's awful. Kirk Cousins, that's awful. Stafford, that's really bad. Matt Ryan, really bad as well. The rushing leader per yardage goes to Joe Mixon. Jonathan Taylor shortly behind, same with Chubb, Derrick Henry, back to his healthy weights. Oh, also, I did have injuries on, which I think you kind of see maybe Stafford and some of those guys, they did get injured perhaps. I put the injuries on just to try to keep it as realistic as possible. Uh, Javante Williams made him the starter. A lot of yards there, Cam Akers, Aaron Jones, Eckler. Really not, I was a little surprised to see Eckler do that well in Sim. Usually he sucks for me. Dobbins, that's awful yards per carry-wise. Montgomery, decent. Fournette, really good year. If the Buccaneers get a that season from Fournette, how in the hell are they missing the playoffs as hard as they did? There's no way. There's no way. Miles Sanders, eh. Gibson, eh. Two top-tier running backs once upon a time kind of falling apart here. DeAndre Swift, he'll never be good in Sim. Sorry. <laughs> we don't know uh, Swift. The verdict's still out real life and definitely in-game. Hall, oof. Not a whole lot of attempts there for him. Uh, Chris Carson must have got injured because 700 yards, 4.1 yards per carry. Cordero must have got injured. Uh, Kareem Hunt, obviously, he's a backup. Kenny Walker, he would have been a backup. Maybe they just split the carries, I guess. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, nothing too crazy. Nothing too out of the norm. Uh, wide receivers, where is that guy? Where's that Devontae Adams fella? And he really sucks in Sim for some, for some reason. I don't know why. I think it's just the Raiders scheme, to be fair. But Keenan Allen, number one in yards, could happen. Decent touchdowns. Michael Thomas, you know, one. I, I would say I want to see him doing well, but he is a competitor of the Packers. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it'd be nice to see him do well, I guess. Brandon Cooks, put him at superstar because the man has just been great everywhere. Uh, he seems to play. Gabriel Davis, that's kind of surprising for him to be their number one. Christian Watson, of course. Rodgers has to throw to somebody and him being the X receiver at this point. 1,300 yards, 16 touchdowns, really good numbers. Kittle, really good numbers. Beasley, he's not a bear, is he? 1,300 yards, 9 touchdowns. Debo, really good year. Uh, Jamar Chase, down year, but still really good. Same with CeeDee Lamb. Julio rejoined the Falcons, which, I mean, I don't see why that would ever be a thing for him. That just makes no sense. Uh, Diggs, okay. I mean, John Mechie, okay. 1,100 yards, we like that. We see that. Devontae barely over a thousand. AJ Brown, a thousand one hundred. Lazard, a thousand. If I see Lazard with a thousand yards receiving, I don't know what the hell is going on. 
Cameron Brait with nearly a thousand. Jeez, Sammy Watkins. I have injuries on, folks. I mean, you could probably tell by the fact that Chris Carson had 600 yards. He definitely got injured at some point. Uh, let's see if we can actually see, like, actually prove that he was injured. Yeah, I mean, you look at these numbers. 500 snaps played barely for a guy that's easily their number one. Yeah, for Axford Helbo, you can see it right there. Sammy Watkins stays healthy. I mean, I've been hearing reports that they feel really good about him, but I, I mean, still. Of course, let's take a look at those rookie numbers, actually, the sack totals. So, uh, looking at Mr. Trevor Penning, who I just, I don't know if I see it at the pro level. 17 sacks, Charles Cross with 16 uh, Zach Tom with 13. You know, just kind of some of the guys that you expect to start. Obviously, these numbers are just completely random anyways. But Evan Neal with 10 allowed for the Eagle or for the Giants. That's pretty much like the most massive win you could ask for. Uh, Freire uh, with 9 allowed. And Aquani with only 8 allowed. So, some okay numbers for the sack total guys. Kenyon Green, that's actually these two kind of high. You know, it's kind of high for guards. I ain't going to lie, but... Pretty much that for that. Let's take a look at the defense for sack totals. I don't know why I said it like that. Uh, Jeffrey Simmons, 23. Robert Quinn, who did have a really good year last year, 21. 18 and a half for Donald. Any of the youngsters up there? Hello, where are you, JPP? 11 and a half. Uh, where are the youngsters? Aiden Hutchinson with eight and a half sacks. Not terrible for a rookie year. Same with Karloftis, seven and a half. The Chiefs, man. They got to stop with these good drafts. I'm sick of it. Uh, Thibodeau with seven sacks. Trayvon Walker with only six. There might have been some other, uh, like, what about the, the Jets, dude? Uh, who was that? Evakiti with three and a half. Did Jermaine just not do well? I'm pretty sure in our rebuild of the Jets, he wasn't super great either. Picks. Any crazy pick numbers? Devin Lloyd with four picks, 104 tackles, half a sack. Any other? Kyle Hamilton with three interceptions and a pick, or a sack anyways. Obviously, with, with a, a pick. Uh, I mean, not really seeing any crazy numbers. A lot of guys at three. Not really seeing any of the rookies either, unfortunately. Yeah, not really seeing any crazy numbers. I don't think we're going to see any, like, great rookie of the year numbers. Christian Harris, not bad for the Texans. Uh, Sauce with two, 131 tackles. Kind of seems like he got burned a lot, if that's the case. Uh, Malcolm Butler forgot he's like user created at this point. JT Woods with two. Yeah, not really seeing any crazy stuff there. Uh, kicking, I mean, I don't think there was any rookie kickers, right? Don't even know if the rookie punter would have started. Yeah, he had 13 punts. Did he get hurt? It's kind of weird that he would get 13 punts, unless they just only punted 13 times, which, I mean, I suppose is possible. No, he's just got replaced. I, that's weird to me. Uh, kicker turn touchdowns. We had five. Of course, Kadarius Tony, one of my favorite players in the league, getting a kick return touchdown. Love to see it. Punt return touchdowns. Tyler Lockett, the only guy to do it. And I'm going to take a quicker uh, or closer look at the Jets. I just want to see Jermaine Johnson. He's another one of those guys that you hope to see do well early. And he, he did. He had nine and a half. He just wasn't on the list for some reason. So he was actually probably the best rookie pass rusher based on those numbers right i mean we've seen the other guys that were like eight and a half was the most but justin herbert mvp of the league trey lance was number four so maybe i'm a little off my rocker with that oh, he's not going to be that great because of the picks uh but let's quickly look at this we kind of want to see the rookie stuff more so based on this they would have kenny pickett as the afc rookie of the year which of course since he's a quarterback and a lot of the quarterbacks that were rookies aren't projected to start that's kind of expected uh, defensive Rookie of the Year. I don't know why Jermaine's so low, but they have Devin Lloyd as the Rookie of the Year, so there's that. Uh, any other awards? Uh, Taron Armstead, Best Offensive Lineman, which I suppose isn't even really an award in real life. Uh, Trey Lance, the Offensive Player of the Year with Robert Quinn. Defensive Player of the Year. Trey Lance, Offensive Rookie of the Year. Actually, what the hell am I doing? That's, that's not true. Matt Corral, Rookie of the Year. Watson, number two. I'm trying to look if there's any, like... Well, we can't really see any realistic ones, right? Like, Christian Watson maybe has a chance. I just think he's going to be too raw, though, to put up those kind of numbers. But at the same time, Rodgers has a tendency to just make someone look good. And he obviously has that athleticism, even if you're raw as hell, to just burn downfield and just get a dot thrown to you. Aiden Hutchinson, rookie of the year on the defensive side with Thibodeau pretty close behind. Kobe Dean, kind of uh, sneaky numbers there, perhaps. Rodgers close second there. 
Uh, Christian Watson, best wide receiver. Okay, dude. Uh, who was the actual MVP? Was it actually Robert Quinn? It might have been Robert Quinn. Wait, oh yeah, they don't. I forgot they don't have like they just have it each side again. I mean, I would give it to Robert Quinn there, obviously, because he just killed it. But let's go on to see the Super Bowl. We're gonna go week by week though, just because I'm a little sleazer. Even though the video is probably super long way, you know, as is. Uh, wrong thing. It's the playoff schedule in the wild card round. Yeah, the Bills and the Steelers with the Steelers winning. The Browns and the Titans with the Browns smoking them. Chargers and the Bengals with the Chargers destroying. Well, they won. Carolina versus the Saints. Carolina wins. Dallas versus Cardinals, which Cardinals uh, lose. And then San Fran versus Seattle. San Fran wins it. The next week, you have Broncos, Chargers, Packers, Panthers, Steelers, Browns, Niners, Cowboys. The Panthers being this far. Once again, they have a lot of really good young talent, but I just do not see that. I just... I don't care if the Packers win it all. I just don't want the Panthers to. Oh, my God. Please don't let the Panthers win the Super Bowl in Sim. Like, this whole video is almost ruined by that, if that's the case. Denver moving on to the championship round. Of course, same with the Car uh, the Panthers, anyways. The Browns win again, and Dallas wins again. Dallas usually does it. Of course, Dallas does have that, you know, crazy potential with really good roster. They just seem to suck every time. And then the Super Bowl is between the Panthers and the Broncos. Please don't let this happen. Please do not let the Panthers win. No, don't get me wrong. It could happen. I just don't think it's... Oh, that's... What? 48-10 to 10 over Dallas, and then 28-24 to 24 over the Cleveland Browns. Of course, the Browns are kind of smoking each uh, team, but that defense from Denver locking them up. I guess we'll take a quick look at the Pro Bowl roster, too, since we're here. Uh, you have Trey Lance, Dak Prescott, Rodgers, Herbert Burrow, Josh Allen. I'm just going to kind of quickly look through this. I don't care too much about this. Just throwing that out there. It's a little bit easier, you know, if you don't want to watch all that other stuff. A little bit easier to see, you know, kind of some of the top performers in the league without having to actually look. Because here they are, Karlaftis back up in the Pro Bowl. Not bad as a rookie. Trayvon Walker is in the Pro Bowl. Wait, do we not see uh, Devin Lloyd? Why is this the case? I thought he was good enough to just be one of the best players in general. Taylor Rapp, Kyle Duggar. What is going on here? Xavier McKinney. What is going on? I don't even know, but Super Bowl. Let's go into it, I guess. Make this video as long as possible. Juice the ads. What? Uh, oh, I can't go in the game unless I switch teams. And, of course, I will be cursing the Panthers, so there's that. Let's go in and watch it play out. And I don't mean the whole thing. We're going to sim quickly, obviously. I ain't got another whole hour to watch some AIs terribly play up the field. I just kicked it. I have really screwed this team over now. Oh, Hecker. I forgot about him. That's the reason why they're winning. They're pinning everyone to the one every time. <laughs> I will say, in fairness, in Madden, he's a huge factor. Absolutely a massive factor. Being able to punt it basically where you want because of that ability is juiced to hell but here it is the broncos coming back seven to three still seven to three still seven to three what a super Bowl! i would love to watch this i promise you i'd record the thing and watch it again right after it's super fun here we go starting to wake up a little bit 17 to 10 24 to 10 24 to 17 denver not going away tying the game up nine minutes left panthers with the touchdown and the Panthers are going to win the Super Bowl. What the hell is this? Sorry, Panthers fans. I'm not trying to be a hater. I'm just trying to be a realist. Do you guys honestly think this is going to happen? I just do not know if I see it. I just don't know if I see it. But, of course, we see it here. So, we'll see if Madden's right. Obviously, we'll do one for next Madden as well once it comes out early. I'm going to try to remember that the Panthers won the Super Bowl here based on these rosters compared to next Madden as well and just see in general if either of the teams unless it's the Panthers again does it all and yeah I mean the Panthers in a Super Bowl hopefully YouTube NFL doesn't like try to copyright strike it it is what it is Matt Corral a Super Bowl winning quarterback in his first year already kind of you know I wouldn't say unexpected to be the starter but you know, not a guarantee to be the starter, I suppose. Let's take a look at the numbers. So, Matt Corral, 
outplaying Russell Wilson in the Super Bowl. I will say Russell Wilson seemed really bad in Sim this season for them, but interesting, interesting. Uh, DJ Moore with some pretty good numbers. Like I said, you know, if Christian McCaffrey stays healthy and DJ Moore and all that. I mean, they got some players. I just think that they're they're not there yet. But I guess the right amount of luck with just the right day, that's the kind of thing that's dangerous about. I wouldn't say dangerous because it still makes it fun to watch. You know, we see teams left and right in every sport just drop a bad game, have a bad day. And with the NFL, it's a one-off. You know, you get one game. So if you're not on and the other team is, it doesn't matter who you are, what your roster looks like. We've seen it in the past and we'll continue to see it where the team that is much worse finds a way to win against the better team. It just happens, so you can't completely rule anything like this out. But, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below who's going to win the Super Bowl, who do you guys think is going to be the Offensive Rookie of the Year, the Defensive Rookie of the Year, MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, all that stuff. If I had to guess MVP, I would probably give it to Brady. Uh, defensive Player of the Year, TJ Watt. Uh, as far as Rookie of the Year, obviously Kenny Pickett, Defensive Rookie of the Year, maybe Aiden Hutchinson. I feel like those are pretty safe bets in fairness. And then Coach of the Year, could we see a crazy one and see Lovey Smith, maybe? Houston gets competitive in that kind of weaker division. Who knows? You know, if he can get them to eight or nine wins, I don't see why he wouldn't be. I mean, that's, that's a really rough roster to work with, but... Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below for all those things. And, yeah, we'll have a Nighthawks video a little bit later today. And then yet another rebuild tomorrow. Hopefully you guys enjoy your weekend. Hopefully you guys come back for next video. But until next video, see ya!